Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Wednesday, December 16, 2020, and welcome to Change the Shed. I'm glad you're here, and uh, welcome to my studio. If you haven't been here before, um, I started this when Colorado went into a lockdown in March, and I've been doing it ever since, although not every day as I did at the beginning. So um, as the coronavirus continues, I will keep doing Change the Shed. It's been kind of fun and um, happy to hear there is a vaccine and probably another one coming. And that's great news, although it will still take many months for everyone to be safe. So wear your masks. That's my PSA for today. Um, continue all of the things, even if you get the vaccine. Um, so I am so happy you're all here. And um, again, welcome to my studio. Before I forget, I'm going to um, have a couple weeks off. Next week and the week after, um, heaven only knows what will show up, but maybe nothing. So we'll see what happens in the next couple weeks, but it is the holidays and I'm going to take a couple weeks off from Change the Shed. So I will see you the first week of January after today. Um, welcome everybody from all over the world. It's wonderful to have you here. I'm really glad. Um, those of you in England are tuning in from your evening, and those of you in the United States are somewhere in the middle of the day. And if I ever get anyone live from Australia, you get a special award, because it is the middle of the night there. Uh, hi, Maureen. I'm hoping everybody else can see me, that it's just something local for you. Yeah, it looks like um, everybody else can see me, Maureen, so check your browser or something. Uh, maybe restart your browser. That is always my first tip in the online classes. If you're having difficulties with sound or video or it's not playing or the links are wonky or something, refresh your browser. Fixes everything. Sometimes, not always. Um, okay, well today I have uh, this piece again. This is my, uh, I'm not sure if this piece is my um, nemesis or what, but I'm still working on it. I did a thing last week. Um, you saw me struggle with the values last week. I am, I've taken this out and put it in a thousand times, not a thousand, but over and over I've tried different colors. I'm still not happy with this, but you know what? We're just moving forward at this point. These things happen. This is not my favorite piece, um, but it's not, it's not uh, the end of the world. It's a learning experience. This is the one I did right before it. And what my intention was here was to change this part that's dark to something very light. And I just couldn't make it work out. So I went back to this, but um, yeah, anyway, I found the coneflower picture. We were talking about coneflowers. This is the picture that this um, image sort of came from. And it's a little complicated even for 12 EPI. So this, I was swearing at it last night because this area right in here, is super complicated in terms of um, all these little tiny parts. Um, I ended up simplifying by leaving out this petal and um, I'm probably going to change the shape of a few of those to make them work out a little better. Uh, lessons learned on the fly. Um, so, I am today working on uh, this little part right here. So a little, um, another petal comes in of the flower and um, I want it to be a little bit lighter than the other ones. You can see here I had some petals that were darker and this one was quite dark. This is a little lighter. This one was darker here and got a little lighter there. Um, this one did the same thing, got lighter at the top. This one I want to be even lighter, um, just thinking about sunshine and such. And so this is the color um, at the brightest there. And I'm going to try adding a little of this color at the top of that petal. But I'm going to start with 
a little bit of the darker at the bottom of it and then I will switch to the lighter color I think hmm you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna try one of each one strand of each to start with. This is 12 ends per inch and I'm using two strands of Weaver's Bazaar Fine Wool. So, let's give it a go. Um, I can pretty much guarantee the next change to the shed, I'll have a different piece on the loom. <laughs> this one is I did make sure yesterday that I had my sheds correct uh, before starting, so I wasn't uh, trying to fake that on live camera. Um, let's do that. So I'm putting that in as an eccentric line just to get all of that shed in the same place. And then I'm going to go back and fill this in a little bit. I want it to stay looking a little bit curvy, so I'm going to push the eccentric outlines a tiny bit here. And this petal goes all the way up to here, which I don't have that part quite filled in. So we'll see whether I can make that work or if I have to go back and take it out. I have to take it out, I'll put it on the blog. and Y'all can see the saga of this post, including my woe. Uh, I'm going to, I'm just gonna put in that much of, what did I say, see how bad my memory is? I had one strand of each of these. I'm gonna go to two strands of this, and I'm gonna leave this tail here because I think I can use it. Um, to finish that bit. Oh, also last night completely swearing about weaving from the front. I was <laughs> just so frustrated because I couldn't find any of the tails I wanted. I really love weaving from the back and so there are times where I find it super frustrating to weave from the front. Although it is easier to see what you're doing when it's so tiny. Just trying to decide how to put this in. I think I'm gonna keep this tail on this side. I'm gonna do a pigtail here to make the very end of this little petal a little thicker. Pigtails are great for that. This petal isn't all that thick, so I want to be careful not to make it too fat. Oh yeah, Mandy, I'd love to know also how, what time is it in? New Zealand. Jennifer asked, um, Mandy, what time is it in New Zealand? Um, New Zealand is a little farther east than Australia, right? So it's probably, we'll just let you, you'll let us know, Mandy. Jessica, that's a great suggestion. She said, why don't I do a demo weaving from the back? I am going to. This is in the works for 2021. There will be demos for the back, from the back for sure. Okay, I wanted a little different shape there, so we'll see what that. I added a little blip at the end of the petal, and then the question is how fat to make it? It's a little bit steep for this eccentric line, so we'll see if that. Partly it's steep because I keep pushing it down too much. Okay, I'm gonna do 
do the same thing here where I leave this up here. And I'll fill those in later. Oh, that was a hill thread at the edge. So right here. Um, let me move that there. You can probably see that better. That was a hill thread. I'm going to take it back out and make it a valley thread. So that that curve packs down a little bit better. Okay. I might like that. I don't know. So then there's the top of the hill that fills in all the way from here up, which is really what I wanted to work on today. Oh, Mandy. So Mandy answered. She's in New Zealand. 6.40 a.m. Mandy, you get the prize for today. Unless there's an Australian here. I think it's a couple hours earlier, maybe, in Australia. All right, my shed's all right. So now I want this color to change. This is, this is the other thing. I was having trouble with the colors, so I started over here and I was having trouble figuring out which colors I used to use them again up here. I think I did an okay job, but um, also would have liked more, um, less of a value difference between these two. Uh, but, which I think I did better down here, but anyway, it's fine. It's a tapestry diary piece and I am spending too much time um, focused on the details. So this, I'm looking around for the yarn. Um, oh, that is, it's not that, it's this. I like to look at what, where I started. So it's these two and I want to go lighter. If I can find the ball, I'm more likely to pick the right colors than if I don't. Um, lighter and let's go one lighter on the gray. So I'm flipping these. Let's see. It was these two and I'm going to go to these two really quickly and then I want it to get brighter. When I work on a piece like this, I am actually thinking about this particular place when I'm working on a tapestry diary piece. I often am thinking about a place. And this, of course, is about um, the fires this year in Colorado. And this piece is about the hopes for regeneration of the landscape. We had just the one fire near Fort Collins was over 300 square miles of burned land. So pretty much all of the places that I go to hike were burned, uh, which really sucks actually. <laughs> mm, you know what? I'm not going to like that because I want this to be lighter and that line is going to show up. I'm going to just leave the, um, the debate in my head is whether to have an outline here, an eccentric outline or not. Um, I think I'm going to take this out. I'm not going to like it. I know I'm not going to like it. I'm going to leave it about right there. You know what? We're going to do this. Sometimes if I don't want to unweave something, a needle, and it's just one pick, a needle. I want this weft to go in that hole, and there's already a weft on top, so let's take a needle there. Maureen, that's a 
a good question. How many colors or shades of yarn do you have? Um, you can't see my table here, but there's about 30 shades of different colors. Not all of them I've used. Some of them are trials and rejected. But that isn't really normal for me for a piece. Um, I don't usually weave pieces like this that are so complicated with different colors. To me, this is um, not my style of weaving, and I don't think that I've done a good job on this piece, and I'm just being brave by showing it to you. I think it looks messy, and um, this is my own inner critic, and I should be better than this at this stage in my weaving career. So if I was an, a beginner or I'd only been weaving a few years and I love this, I would be freaking thrilled with it. So do not think that I'm saying it's bad weaving. I'm just saying that I could do better, but here we are and we're just going to go with it. Okay, so now I've shifted the shed by putting in that outline, which means that this will not weave like it did a second ago. So another option, there's many options for that. One of my favorites is to use crapo, crapod, little frog. I like to call it crap, that's what my teacher called it. When you just throw in a line of weft in the other shed to change the, sh to change the shed in a little part that's wrong. Crap is what James call it, James Goler. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't be upset by me saying that out loud, but we can't check with him, so. And it is true, that's what he called it. All right, if I start here, I'm gonna screw myself with the shed. So, I'm gonna do this. I know, gasp, tail's on the edge. Could have created a float to avoid that. Doing a little sort of smoothing thing by going up higher there. I don't know how well you can see that, but if your screen is big, you can probably see it. Um. Oh, uh, Jessica's asking about doing a sumac edge. Yeah, you could do that. I don't want to do a sumac. Um, I just, I don't use sumac much and um, you know, it creates a texture in the thing and I like a relief. I mean, part of my thing is that my tapestries are flat on the front. It's just an aesthetic choice that I made. So I don't use sumac because of that, but you can create very beautiful things with sumac. So that would have been a good option for sure. Okay. So I want this little piece over here to be gray. My other frustration last night with weaving from the back was that, so you can see here, I've, oh, maybe you can't quite see it. There's blue tape down here holding these two wefts down. It's like taped to the bottom of my loom. I was so frustrated that um, if I were weaving from the back, I would have put the tails from those um, where I started on a needle and um, run them in to anchor them. It's sort of what Sarah Sweat does in her tucking the tail stuff. Um, which would have given me a good start, and I'm having trouble with the yarn being too loose in that area, and I was, um, I was like, I can't use the fix I would normally use, so I use tape. Uh, I'm sure those of you who weave from the front a lot with um, small, complicated things have better solutions than blue tape, but I love it. All right, I'm just putting this little bit of color in and then I want this to change again um, Marlena I can't remember if I use the word crapo look in the um, glossary if it's in there then I do use it um, the I mean terms to know in the first chapter there's a couple pages that are called Terms to Know. If Crapo is in there, then um, it is in the book and it's probably in the 
eccentric weaving section shows you how much I can actually remember where stuff is, but it seems like I probably used it, but oh, hey, here's the book. Um, hold on. Oh, I don't see it in the index, so I probably didn't. Um, sidetracked. Sorry, you guys. In chapter one, there is a three page spread about terms to know. And nope, I didn't use it. I must have used. Uh, just a descriptor instead of using that word. I think I decided not to use it because um, I don't know how to say it. I don't know, ac honestly, I don't know um, how the French use it. It's a French word. Um, I just didn't uh, feel like it was exactly my thing. So that must be why I didn't use it. Um, Oh, Michelle, how to avoid Tales at the Edge. Yeah, that's a great question. I am working on some new videos about Tales at the Edge, so I will talk more about that. But um, I could have done a float. Kind of, Archie Brennan did this a lot, where you start the tail in, let's see if I have a little piece of yarn, where he would like start, let's see, how would he do that? Someone else is going to get this right. And I'm not going to get it right. He would do something like start the tail here and then do a float and then come in and then float around the back and then keep weaving. So that keeps the tail, this would be in the back. So that keeps the tail, um, that covers the shed and keeps the tail away from the edge. So that's a good option. Um, so I put it, hold on is in the way. So if you do, um, if you put the tail in like this and then I'm floating around the back and then coming up to the front. I don't like how that edge is, but there's probably a way to wrap the edge a little bit better. And then you have to go behind where you put that float before and then you can keep weaving. It's a little more challenging with the sheds also, but um, it's not a bad way to keep the tails away from the edge. You can also, if you have more room, you can use a couple butterflies of the same color, it's starting in the center, or try to start, you can make your shed so that your butterflies start inside and go out. Um, that is something that I do try to do sometimes. Okay. Um, okay, it was these two colors I used last, and I wanna lighten it up some more, and I would like so here's another thing in my head. Um, I would like this to sort of reflect, the sky is going to be blue, and it'd be nice to have a little blue in the top of this hill. The danger is, will it make the values too similar at the top of the hill so that you can't see the difference? So like this one got pretty light right here, and the values are not, if I changed one thing about this tapestry, it would be that this was the dark, the hill was a little bit darker so that you could um, see the values a little bit better. So in my head, I'm, I'm debating, I'm looking at this um, blue, uh, blue gray instead of the gray. Because it would be nice to have a little blue in there but I don't think it's gonna work well with this guy. So let's go with, do I have a lighter green? I think instead I'll lighten up the green. So this is more of an apple green. This has more um, black in it, and this is more of a pure green. And I think that will work okay with this yellow. So let's try that. I might not like the abrupt shift to lighter and brighter, but we'll see. On a bigger piece, I would have done some gradation. I love the gradation. I would have changed, I would have gradually gotten this lighter through um, shifting these a piece at a time. I'm gonna put that in the back. Oh, I could do this here. This would be smart. 
change the shed. And instead of changing that at the edge of the shape, I think I'm going to want one more warp over here. Instead of changing that at the edge of the shape, starting the new color in the center. Yes, I could splice that, but I'm not going to right now. Tails at the edge sounds like a novel. I think so, Mandy. <laughs> Thanks, Paula. Yeah, thanks for also the support on the fact that I don't really like this piece a whole lot, how it's turning out. You know, sometimes what happens, though, is that I'll weave something and I won't like it while I'm working on it. For whatever reason, I'm frustrated with it. And then um, after it comes out the loom, I'll put it away and forget about it. And then it, I'll find it again later in the finishing pile when I'm finishing stuff. And I'll be like, oh, I really like this. This turned out great. So sometimes it just takes some time. Which is why at some point I stop fussing with, this is a, something that I think we all should do. Just stop fussing at some point and finish it, and then you can start over with a new piece. Um, okay. Uh, see how much that creates a really strong line there, which might be okay, because it's a landscape. Let's just keep going and see what happens. Also, sometimes on something like this, I won't like it. Like in my head, I think it's going to work, but I'm not sure. And if I take it out, I'll never know whether it worked with the background color. So um, I call it working in series. If you're not sure, but you're reasonably sure that it might work, just finish it and then look at, look at how it comes out. So what I'm saying is I'm going to put blue on top of this and a really light blue, this blue that's over here. And so that will change how this looks. And so I won't know that until I put the blue in there. So sometimes you don't, you're making a judgment too early is what I'm saying. And it's better to just finish what you're doing and, and then and then you can have a judgment about it after you've let it sit for a few days. And then you'll know how to do the next piece. Let's see if I can really quickly, see if I can pick up the pace a second. Let's see if I can um, just start the blue in there and we'll see what it looks like. Okay. Um, not sure about that eccentric. I'm going to take that out. Um, the problem, of course, is the shed will be when I, because I built this up with one butterfly, um, the shed on one side of this hill is not the same as the shed on the other. And I, want to try outlining this curve. Uh, so that gives me a problem because um, obviously the sheds are different. So here's one way to fix that. Let's outline it with this brighter green. Sometimes um, I was an apprentice of James Kohler for a couple years. And so I worked in his studio a lot. And I watched him outline, if you've seen his harmonic oscillations pieces, each of those curves are outlined. 
And in those pieces and some other pieces I watched him work on, um, he would often use for eccentric outlines, um, probably not in a case like this that's sort of realistic, but he would use a, a complementary color, just one strand in a bundle. So for example, if he was doing either a complementary color or a much brighter version of a color. So like, I think there's a yellow, um, sort of an orange, rusty red piece where he actually has um, like a, a blue-green strand in some of the outlines, which you can't see in the piece because the piece is so large, but um, it gives the outline a little oomph. Sorry, that was random and not really applying to this because I wouldn't do it in this case, but <laughs> um, it's an interesting thing to play with. Okay, so I started at the top where the shed changed, went down. Then if I change the shed and go back up, I can go over the whole thing. And then if I want the whole shed to be, yeah, okay, so that gives us the same shed, um, that everything is in the same shed. So I'm not gonna return this to the top because if I did, I would have two different sheds. And then really quick, let's just look at what this blue looks like. Um, Mary asked about the lark's head knot on the edge. Um, I think it depends on the weft you're using, Mary. I think it works fine. So um, you can do, Kathy, I think Kathy Todd Hooker teaches this a lot. You can do a lark's head knot where you flip the, um, this knot is actually in my book, where you do this on the edge. I did that backwards because you don't want that little thing on the front. But if this were the edge, if you can, you're using a material that the, um, the knot looks good at the edge, it's okay. Um, obviously this is, I would have only used one strand there. Basically, I guess what I'm saying is if you can make it look okay and it's stable, it's fine. <laughs> That's a little bit my mantra for tapestry weaving is, if it looks good and it's structurally sound and it does what you want it to do in terms of the image you want, then it's okay. Gonna regret that. That's a shedding issue. So there's a couple ways I could do this. If I want to avoid the tail on the edge, this would accentuate the eccentric line and keep my shed the same. So let's just start with that and we'll see if it works. I just wanna get a little bit of this blue in there. I don't want the blue to go so I'm gonna end up doing some hatching here. So I can't actually keep, I can't weave this all the way up if I'm gonna hatch this lighter blue with another color of blue, probably this one. I don't want there, I don't want the sky to be all super light blue. I want it to get darker, so. But I think so far the value change there between the green and the blue is probably fine. And um, that makes me happy enough, I guess. Oh, thanks, Barbara. Look, she gave me a um, reference to the half pass thing, using a half pass to shift the shed. So that's what I used. Um, page 137. Um, thanks, Barbara. Here, I'll pop up the, um, there's the page. So when we were talking about crapaud and I was looking in the book to see whether crapaud crap is, if I use that word and I didn't, which I have no memory of deciding not to use, but... Um, Half pass is apparently what I decided. Thank you, Barbara. Um, yes, Helen, I do that all the time. Helen asked if I could change just one of the two thread colors. So that's a great way to, gra to grade and why um, I often, 12 EPI with this yarn, two, two strands works okay. Um, Three strands is really pushing it for me in terms of covering the warp, so. But three strands would give you more color choices at this 
um, shed. Anyway, yes, I definitely um, will change the color and just went, that's what I did right here. You can actually see that this is darker and then it actually changes to lighter. I had two strands of, I think this color, no, two strands of <clears throat> the same color here and then <clears throat> one of a lighter color and that color again. <clears throat> <laughs> Thanks, Marla. That's really sweet. Um, maybe I need to be able to distance myself from the technical side of the pieces so you can just enjoy the beauty of the picture. Very good suggestion. Uh, also, when, if I stop when I get frustrated, I really was frustrated last night. And I stopped, and I felt much better about it today. So that helps also. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, Jessica is talking about a book that's a sort of tutorial for dealing with the inner critic. There's a lot of those. The um, War is Art book by Stephen Pressfield is a classic. And then there's one I talked about a couple in the Design Solutions class last uh, year. What's the one I'm trying to think of? Somebody here is going to think of it. Oh, the monkey book. I think it's Danny Gregory. Um, Shut Your Monkey is the title. Wow, that took a long time to come up. Oh, Linda, I don't know that one. Your Inner Critic, A Big Jerk by uh, Danielle Kreisa. That um, sounds like a good read also. Thanks for coming, all of you. Helen, Helen Estadash, thanks for coming. She's probably, uh, she's off in England somewhere, so where it is evening. Yes, Elsie's used that floats for no um, ends at the edges. Here's another one, Raw Art Journaling by Quinn McDonald. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Oh, I can. Um, that one is from Jessica, who runs uh, Weaving Rainbow, which is a great place to get little, beautiful little looms and tools. She has some great shed sticks, you guys. I keep forgetting to show you these, but... Um, recently got, uh, hold on, wait, wait, let me change this. Um, just little pointy seven inch shed sticks. Um, so Jessica has a bunch of those at Weaving Rainbow. Um, okay, you all. Well, so it is, um, the holidays, right? And we're all gonna enjoy being home and our Christmas lights and whatever else we're doing, making cookies or something. Um, I hope you have great holidays and I'm not gonna guarantee that you'll find me online, but who knows what grand ideas I'll have. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to do some weaving and set up some new things for next year. And um, I hope that you all are gonna do the same McKenna says happiness and health over the holidays and through the next year. And that is the sentiment I would pass on to all of you. Please take care of yourselves. Stay healthy. Have happy holidays. Weave something. If you are weaving little anythings, um, put them up on Instagram with the hashtag change the shed. If you use Instagram or Twitter um, or stick them on Facebook and tag me or put them on my Rebecca Mezoff Tapestry Studio Facebook page for my business. You can just pop them, I think. Somebody try to let me know if it doesn't work. I think you can do that, like share to my page. Um, so Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, Happy every other holiday that we have this season of the year. And um, I will see you all in the new year on Change the Shed. And um, we'll, we'll just keep on keeping on, right? Mary Lou, you caught me just before I was going to click the finish button. Mary Lou, that is, I should have mentioned this anyway. Mary Lou asked, any idea when Design Solutions 2 is coming? Absolutely. Design Solutions 2, the second season of the design course, starts January 11. Registration opens January 4. So there's more information on my website under online learning. Um, it says Design Solutions Season 2, I think. 
and it has all the information and it will have a registration link on January 4. So if you all want to take the design class, um, I'm working hard on it and it's got a lot of really fun things. I'm doing an interview with someone this afternoon who's going to be in the class and I'm so excited about it. So I'm not going to tell you who it is until the interview is actually done, but I'll put it on the website. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Have a fantastic um, holiday, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.